What's your full title? How should I address you? Hi, I'm Dave from Boy in a Band, and today I'm here with uh, Professor Dr. Martin Polyakov, CBE, FRS, BA, MA, PhD, DSC, SCD, um, FRSC, CCAN, FICME, CM. Oh, it was exactly what I was used to, you know, being a musician. I totally have a horrendous amount of explosions going on all over the place. Um, it didn't sound that different to what I was used to, being a dubstep producer. But it certainly looked a bit different, and there were a lot more uh, signs saying, don't touch and you might die, and things like that, which was a lot of fun. It was very warm, very warm and colourful, and I think I singed some of this. The whole time I was just constantly thinking, this sound is awesome! Every now and again I'd just hear a sound that was just incredible and... <laughs> so many of these uh, chemistry experiments make these tonal sounds which are so interesting for this kind of music. And they can be layered up very, very effectively to make something that's really interesting to listen to. One of the, my favourite moments was when we did the barking dog experiment with the really large tube. And... Uh, the, the, <laughs> They t was it Neil told me that it's going to be loud. I was like, oh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a music producer. I've been on stage. I, I know what loud is. I didn't know what loud was. That was loud, man. That was loud. Yes, it was loud. First of all, I had to chuck all 50 different uh, files from all the things we recorded um, onto the computer, listen through them all, name them all to <laughs> the naming random hissing noise, organize them into percussion, uh, tonal stuff, effects, so kind of like whooshy sounds and things like that, and just random noises that didn't really seem to fit anywhere. Hammer thing, centrifuge, vacuum drain, uh, Bunsen barking dog. Uh, fireworky pops. Fireworky pops. I wanted to try and make it interesting from the start, um, and I, I thought how, showing one of these experiments being uh, compiled and then exploding would be a great initial uh, start to it. And one of the coolest ones was where the ice was set on fire, which was not something I thought physically possible before this, which is quite cool. I feel quite educated now. Um, so yes, it made a really satisfying boom sound right at the start, this one here. And then the crackles started to sound a bit rhythmic when I looped them, and I, I really quite liked it. It sounded a bit like a hi-hat on a drum kit. <laughs> Well, for this one, there was a lot more percussion than there were um, tonal sounds. So I had to be quite careful and I figured rather than trying to aim for something that was hugely melodic, I'd just focus on what I had and make it more about the rhythms and the percussion. So I started by just building up four separate beats um, throughout the song. There's the first one, which I did with the, the fire as the kick drum. Um, I'll show you that one. And then I found this incredible sound when the, uh, the bung in this big tube was popped off by the gas inside it, which sounded like if you're a, an electronic music head, there's something called an 808 kick drum, which is a uh, very old synthesizer. And it sounded so much like that, like an authentic synthesized kick drum. It came across quite like this. That sound there. It even has the t at the top, just like a hi-hat. Incredible. So then I just dropped into that and I, oh, I just want to rap over it. <laughs> and that worked out so nicely. Then we, uh, I quickly chucked in a bit of a chemical jar, which I thought that's a, just tapping some chemicals on the side there and then dropped in. Finally. To the, the big drop. And that was made by two separate um, little devices popping. I can't remember quite the gas. I should have probably uh, done more remembering of what the science was. But um, they had a di slightly different tonal qualities. One came across as a kick drum with a bit of a bassy sound, and the other one was more of a snare. <laughs> This 
This is 100% the sounds I recorded, which I'm really, really pleased with. Um, I, I didn't know whether I'd have to start layering it up, but everything was so bassy and interesting that it really, really worked. I'm so happy that that happened. It's more authentic that way. I wanted to have a big kind of culmination at the end where it started to bring in all the different elements that we'd got throughout the song. So it kind of builds, goes a bit crazy with the rhythms and then kind of builds. And then crash out to one of the more colorful experiments. Again, I was trying to think about the visuals as well because I thought this would be a nice, nice one to uh, really show off what can be done with these experiments. Um, I will create the song and then I'll pass it over to Adam who will then do the visual aspect of it. So we'll have a discussion and figure out what we want to do and then he'll do it and I'll get back to another song. I generally leave Dave to do his thing and just get on with it and and yeah. Well for this project we've, we've actually we've got a hard drive which both of the computers share. So we're able to just dump stuff on the hard drive on one computer and then take it off on the other computer so that we can sort of both send each other edits and things on the fly. It's fairly, fairly quick. For this project, he, well, he sent me over the song, so I've got the, the full song together, but he also sent me each individual stem. So each sound, like it, just, it picks a sound, and for the whole song, he renders out the song with just that sound playing. This half of the screen is audio tracks. This is the video tracks that I've got in at the minute. This is, say, this is one which is filling the tube. And as you can see, there's nothing at the start of the song there, but then at the end you can hear the... And it's just that sound, there's nothing else playing. On this layer here, we've got the, the fireworky sound, which is this, this effect over here. And um, when you see this sound happen, on the audio channel, you know that the, up here the corresponding video channel has to put the, the clip in the right place so that when you play it together, hopefully, it's a lot of fun. It's um, quite different to a lot of stuff we do, but it's, it's, it's interesting because you're, sort of, you're working with loads of different streams of video at the same time and you have to put it all together and make it coherent. It'll be fun. Maybe. I don't Maybe. know. I don't want to make Let's any promises. Go. I'm not making promises. And if it's not good, I'm not going to upload it. But if it's not good, I'm also not going to upload this. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. All right. I will also be interested to see what people think of your production. And um, I wish you great success. Thank you. And I hope, I hope that it will give people a new view of chemistry. <laughs>